Yeah, monetizing yourself while trying to do something, I, I find that it's something that's we need to start putting our attention to conscious businesses or, or businesses that will help people, really. Well, man, uh, right, okay. Because part of the task is, well, right, it's, it's looked upon negatively, I feel, when you start to try and commodify what you're doing mm -hmm. you know what i mean and because all right just before we started recording mm -hmm. for folk watching like um I, I was like telling samina that she needs to do fucking like quantum kitty t-shirts and shit and she was on about like doing a uh, quantum kitty tarot deck and i'm like yes fucking genius and because and it's, it's one of those things that i think it well it's needs not to my tarot because, deck well, but like it's it's art for somebody else like I, I yeah, just was yeah, helping a friend. St still, you being connected to that, yeah. uh, the thing that drive kind of traffic towards it. But I, I think, like, like if if you you like if you if you explain it in terms of like energetic principles, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, it's like we all need energy to do what we're doing. Well, and all all it need, is all you like need streams. You need to make streams available for people to easily provide you. With energy, if they want to put energy towards it. So well, no, it's, it's not like even that. Honestly, that like I've spent so much money on this channel already. Like yeah. I spent like four thousand, five thousand dollars on my equipment alone, and like my, you know, like my camera and like my sound equipment and everything. Like everything, even my laptop was like two thousand dollars. You know, like yeah. So like if you are serious about something you always have to put everything into it and i find that like i was just very serious and i don't know what compelled me to but it's just something that i felt like i wanted to do and when you put so much effort and resources and energy and time into things then yes um it does have value so we all have value and we all have unlimited potential to create unlimited streams of you know exactly um energy so um i think that it's other people that are disempowered that have that negative perspective because i had that as well until not too long ago um but i think that there's a balance you know it's like where you put your energy to what type of business that you're involved in like are you helping people what's coming out of it do you really love it I mean, I, I find that, like, I have... The reason why I do Quantum Kitty is because I genuinely fucking love people. You know? like, And, and I said that in, in my new video that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put up. I didn't put it up yesterday because it was out. Like, no, what happened was I was so excited about the video. I uploaded it without looking at it. Because, you know, like, that's what I do. I'm just like... Sss, sss. You know? And, like, it's taking forever. And, like, I had to go out. So I'm, like, trying to upload it really quickly. And then I, like wanted I just like let me just look at this before I, I upload it fucking one of the green screens I didn't like transition it properly and it was all fucked up and I'm like I'm not gonna put that up there like and then I had to re-upload it and I'm like oh but like that's what you do like when when you love something and like that's what I mean it's it's it like you know you're a creator and I find like creators in general we should be thankful to them for creating such beauty you know and and such happiness and, and joy and, and, and a lot of it really helps people and and I feel like I don't know like I don't find anything wrong with it anymore if I find somebody that really helped me and you know they're just so loving like I just want to love them back and I think that's the psychedelic perspective you know like I don't know like people could be really touchy with money but I find that it's because they haven't really tapped into their infinite nature. So they're a little stuck, you know, they don't know what they really want. I used to be that way too, not too long ago. So, <laughs> you know, I, I know exactly how that feels. And it sucks because then you're judging yourself and you're judging others. And, you're, and like, 
and you realize that if you have that mentality, then you'll never be able to truly, you know, be comfortable with it. Because I, I find art, artistry and like art, it's a gift, you know, and it should be shared and it should be appreciated and it should be loved. And for the most part, like I, I want to give everything away for free because that's the type of person that I am, you know. Um, but I do also have to be realistic because, um, that's the type of like, you know, but that's the type of like light worker mentality. Like you're just giving, 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 and you're not, you're not open to receive anything, you know, and that's also very self-destructive as well. I found that out really easily. So I try to have a perspective where I don't have that type of mentality where like, you know, like money is bad. I mean, the current system kind of sucks, and, like, obviously we're going to have to... I don't well, know. Right. But the world's getting fucking weird. Can I, can I jump in here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, because, I, I, like, I, as, as, as a psychedelic person, mm -hmm. right, it took me a good while to start to appreciate capitalism as the kind of the game of capitalism, you know what I mean? Mm. And then I, I kind of think, like, we, we look at it as a bit of a broken system, and realistically it is, but it's a, it's got good points, right? But it's like any mm. system, instead of blowing it to bits, we need to take the good points and augment it, right? Yeah. And I think that the way that... I don't know, I, I think people are too greedy. I well, think well let, me, let me put this to you, right, okay? Yeah. Because <laughs> what needs to be done is mm -hmm. capitalism needs to be penetrated with ethical psychedelic businesses. Okay. Right? That end up drawing more profit and revenue than any kind of like just what's the word? I'm looking for a word that means evil and corrupt, so I'll just say evil and corrupt instead. <laughs> <laughs> so, evil and corrupt businesses. You know what I mean? As soon as as soon as people start to attach moral value to their spending mm -hmm. then then capitalism kind of solves itself because the, the issue isn't capitalism the issue is some people are selfish cunts yeah. and if, if selfish cunts stop being selfish cunts then capitalism kind of functions nicely so it, it's like how do we provide some kind of incentive mm -hmm. to have a, a, a good fucking moral backbone to your business ethic, you know what I mean? And I, I think if, like, we can, if, if the psychedelic ethical people can find a way to monetize whatever they're creating and show that as a profitable kind of viable thing to do, mm -hmm. then we can start to actually we can start to augment and fix the bits of capitalism that are broken and evolve it into a new thing as opposed to being like, we need some kind of revolution and just to fuck it off and have a, you know, magically we'll have some kind of perfectly sustainable sharing economy. It, it's, well, that's you know what not going to work it's either. Complex. That's the thing. Like, we're kind of fucked, aren't we? Because we're shit people. Like, we can't fucking get along and we can't love one another. And this is what was happening yesterday. So we were just hanging out and like all of a sudden like some woke ass conversations started popping up and i'm like whoa like we were talking about gender we were talking about the whole sexism thing that's going on we we're talking about um you know the whole was police and like police brutality like these were what people were talking about i wasn't talking about it but i was listening and then i got in on the conversation they were talking about capitalism I mean, they were talking about, like, everything, and I'm like, whoa. And these were all, like, 20, 30-year-old people, you know. So, um, yeah, uh, definitely the fact that I even ha I had that conversation, it's, it's really interesting because you don't really expect that from, you know, non-psychedelic people, which they were. Well, man, that, I think that's something that, I've overlooked at previous points in my life, so I'll kind of just expand on it a bit. But it's not just people who've taken drugs and <laughs> like hippie shit that are nice people. You know what I mean? There's there's some folk out there who have their heads screwed on and who are kind of naturally mm. woke. 
you, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it's like they're still part of the tribe in my eyes. You know yeah. what I mean? Anyone who's doing something positive, anyone yeah. who's doing something that's genuinely inspiring and drives you to be a better person. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I think that that's something really cool as well that I enjoy. You know, when you just bump into someone that you don't expect to hold a kind of deeper perspective. Because, I, like, I don't know, it's probably something that is a judgment thing that I need to try and remove, really, because I am still that kind of arrogant prick who approaches people in the holier-than-thou kind of idea. No, not, not in the actual interaction i'm always polite but in the back of my mind i'm always a bit like i'm my look okay 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 that's something i want to talk about that's something i want to talk about because i experienced that yesterday now here's the thing when i talk you know when i talk all of a sudden everybody gathers around you know like they start really listening and and they're like whoa you know and i was telling them about quantum kitty and they're like whoa you know, and like, and then I'm like, so what's up? And like, then I felt, I honestly felt that they felt inferior. And I didn't like that. I didn't like that. As a woke person, like, I didn't like that. I don't like when people feel that they're like, I won't be me. using woke, I'm sorry, just carry on. Because it's that's, that's, brilliant, that's, that's just, brilliant. you know, we'll that's our on. term. But like, <laughs> no, because you don't want to, like, you know what I mean? Like, we still kind of have to yeah. make it, like, I mean, we don't want to be, like, conceited, but, like, yeah, you know, like, we're empaths, you know, we've done a little psychedelics, you know, just, so we're I'll, just I'll, a little open. The term because it's kind of got, like, a bit of, like, a bro connotation to it as well. Right, right? but, like, like it's so funny, but, like, I felt that, and I'm like, they're like, well, you know, you, you seem to know a lot more than me, and I'm like, but no, like, that's, first off, we are all God's presence, we are all infinite we are all the same (laughs) but you know like there will always be you know what i feel it is you get to a point where like you're judging yourself and then you stop judging yourself and then you see everybody is equal but everybody still doesn't see themselves as equal well right how how do you well in that situation how did did you feel like you managed to put yourselves back on an equal footing did you yes. kind of like manage to convey it yes. how, how did you go about doing that Was i it empower kind of that i i totally empower i take it to that level like i'm like hold up i said we were and i said we we're all gods like that's what I, and she's like oh, i think that's so cool that you think that way i'm like well if you only knew your power like that's just how i really am like that's how i really fucking am so this is not really an act this is what i know and this is what works. And it's really like it, a part of me feels like sad, you know, when I when I find that because like that's what stops people from their greatness, that belief that they're not, you know, so Jeez. like I genuinely feel bad when I when I feel that. And then I tried to like make them see, but it doesn't matter because if you haven't had an ego death. If you haven't done like certain psychedelics or if you haven't gone through the second death, which is, you know, like losing something, you know, or or suffering or whatever. But I find that like the reason why like I just let it go is because, again, I'm an empath. I feel everybody's suffering. Like I genuinely feel their pain. And like I just want to give them a hug. Like that's what I was doing. Like this (laughs) this giving people hugs. Like, like you could do it, man. You know, like what could you do? But like, there's, there's a lot of people that, and I found it's it's healing that needs to be done. On an individual level, I always think that since I've done all the healing, that everybody's healed. But that's not the case. So is, is the trying to remain aware of the fact that we're all at kind of different levels of the game, and appreciating that for no, but you know what it is, you you appreciate the vulnerability. And, and the wokeness, because it's so beautiful when seeing somebody in that path and they're just going in and they're like, I don't understand. I'm so different from everybody else. I'm like, yep. So like, why don't I, why can't I connect with anybody? I'm like, yep. Like, what's going on to me? I'm like, you're woke. <laughs> I was like, that's it. You know, like, I mean, it's, there is a beauty within that. 
that's what I mean. So when you are looking at somebody in their divine presence, you're not saying, oh, this poor thing that doesn't have their shit together. You're thinking that's beautiful because they finally are realizing truth. That's all. It's just a different perspective. And like, that's what I said. You have to really fucking love humans to do this type of shit. So, uh, oh, I don't know that this may have been me just being arrogant, but yeah. I want to kind of like stir the conversation into this direction because I feel like I'm good at uh, walking people. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, everybody's been loving your um, your videos with me. I just wanted you to know they they think it's pretty cool. I, I I'm pretty I'm, like I like it though because like we, we don't ex we we never expect to get deep, but we always end up getting deep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you get like I can't help it, be you know what I mean because. It's like every topic that I discuss always ends up fundamentally being about the same shit. You know what I mean? And I'd like I have to I have to really try hard to keep shit surface, if that makes any sense. Because it just it doesn't seem like I'm I'm actually dealing with the thing we're discussing. It feels like I'm I'm just we're talking round the subject instead of getting to the fucking point because the point's the fucking depth of it. You know what I mean? But well, anyway, right, right, what I were fucking on about, claiming that I'm good at walking people, um, it's, it's not just that. I, th I think, like, realistically, let me rephrase that, because I'm going to try and tame down my arrogance just a little bit. Um, it's okay. That it's not I, arrogance, I enjoy, it's confidence. I enjoy seeing people do shit that they love doing. You know what I mean? So, like, I always try with my friends in, like, my immediate environment, to go out of my fucking way to make sure that they have the facility to do the pursuits that they love. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it, 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 I, the reason why I kind of want to discuss this is because I think it's something that everyone can do, even if you're not running a YouTube channel exactly. or, or you, you don't feel like you're doing some bad tracks. Hold and on. Um, frozen, wait, wait a minute. Can, hello? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, could you repeat that? Because now I can hear you. Cool, cool. Where, where did I disappear for you? You, um, you disappeared when you said anybody <laughs> can do this. All right, cool, right. So basically, it's like the interactions with your friends and your immediate social group you can if, if you make sure that every interaction you have with the people in your immediate social group mm -hmm. you leave them happier and more inspired than before they spoke to you that's the shit you need to do and it, it's weird man yeah. because it has this wonderful meaning feedback yes. like one of my mates really wanted to well when he was younger he was really into kind of like drawing and design and went to uni to kind of like do design and shit yeah. and then he dropped out and ended getting up a normal day job and like fucking off drawing and shit like that and it, it was kind of like like i saw him for a few years just kind of lo losing his passion you know what i mean and all it took was like me and one of my other mates just pointing out to him a few times that it's like, remember, you really love doing this thing. Mm -hmm. And if you want to do this thing to the level that you want to do it, then, well, you need to get yourself a new computer sorted out. Yes. And you need to do these little environmental tweaks. Yes. Yeah. And you maybe need to think about doing this. And we'll get you there. And it just took shit like fucking one day I run him to fucking Ikea to get some shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And helped him set up a PC and a few different things like that. And it's like, it's nice spending time with your mates so it doesn't take fucking effort. But no, man, this motherfucker, after like a few months of fucking being on it, he's at the gym like fucking twice a week. He's doing loads of fucking design work. He started a T-shirt company. You know what I mean? And it's like, man, fucking like... Every single fucking person listening and us with every interaction you have with people, do that shit. Be like, what's the thing you love? Why aren't you fucking doing it? Yeah. I care about you. So every time I see you, I'm going to get on your fucking back if you're not doing the shit you love because it's stupid not to. Yeah, and I, I find like that's, that's 
that's a really great way of putting it because I'm also the same way like and I find it's a really good message to share with people is to do what they love and to just keep on going with that it's really hard it's really hard and, and you know I can understand why it's really hard for people to start but nothing's going to change if you don't really invest in yourself like so I realized I couldn't take my channel anywhere until I bought a new computer and I bought software and I bought a camera and you know I bought all these different things and then poof a year later it's something that I'm really fucking proud of you know so there there needs to be a sense of self-worth to invest in oneself and then still have enough worth to produce something that you love you know and to work and, and to have some type of work ethic but for me at least what makes this so easy is I, I really enjoy doing it and I enjoy helping people and creating that you know type of energy and also I do it for myself you know like it feels good I like it you know it, it really does feel good so, um, yeah, yeah, that's really important. Well, man, you, you impact a lot of people. You know what I mean? I think, you'd like, you probably impact more people than you're aware of as well, surely through the kind of ripple effect. Because if you think, like, every person who watches your video, you'll make a change in their kind of life that, that will impact their demeanour and their interactions with other people. And it's just like, shit, man, you've got like a thousand subscribers. And if you imagine every one of them people like knocks on to two people and they knock on to two more and it just, and it's like you've changed the world and you don't even know it. Well, I try not to think it. about it. Why? I don't know. Like, it's just, that's not even it. It's just like, I genuinely feel the, like that I'm needed. Like, this is why I'm here. I got a lot of work to do. Like, the, yeah, that's Don't you ever get what, what stops you being tempted, right, uh -huh. to go kind of full on narcissist god complex with it? Because I see everybody <laughs> equally, like, everybody's the same, everybody has the same potential. Like, that's yeah. it's different from me and a guru. Like, I genuinely see, like, God within everyone. Like, and it's so funny because, like, before when I first started doing this, I wasn't really sure of myself. But the moment I said, yeah, this is me and this is what my beliefs are and, and this is what I'm following all of a sudden it changed and my views changed on people and I stopped fucking hating people so much and I started really loving and started realizing like why I'm doing this and then yeah it really pisses me off when people don't see their own power it really hurts me like I'm just like what the fuck why 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 but you've realized that some people just don't see it and that's when I when you have to be kind because you're like, life's gonna be hard. Man, right. See, maybe you can help me with this actually because I've I've got another friend at the moment. That I've, I've, I'm finding it difficult to support really because they're in a bit of a shit situation and they've been progressively in shit situations. You know what I mean? And oh, sorry, my phones. Okay making noises um but basically so they've been in progressive kind of shit situations and you know things different parameters modulate so things that were shit get better some things that got better get a bit shitter and so on and so forth but they're pretty much kind of stuck in the same milieu and there's not a lot physically that can be done it's not like kind of you know, any just like financial assistance or anything like that will help them out. You know what I mean? And trying to bolster their kind of just general psychology by having a laugh with them and spending time with them and stuff only seems to pay off so much. You know what I mean? It's because it is like there's two things to navigate, right? One is you obviously have to have your own life and you can't support someone 100% of the time. You know what I mean? But how do you know if you're 
giving enough support to a friend and how do you know if you're giving too much and exhausting yourself it's just like how do you personally navigate interactions like that when it's like when when am i giving too much and when am i not giving enough say i got there in the end um (laughs) see okay i totally feel you when someone is taking more energy than they're giving and it's too much and it's not equal and they don't believe their power and they think that they're above me or below me i don't fuck with that anymore they just don't it's standards that's all and you start realizing that certain programs are there to you know distract you from your higher potential and and your power and 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 producing and creating and being awesome so like i just they have a lot to learn and again no hard feelings but i got stuff to do I got a lot of stuff to do, so like that's what that's what you know when we start saying about like you know productivity and like the people around you and what types of people you want to hang out with and what type of people you want to be friends with. Well, I want to be friends with people that are like creatives, like they're they know how good they are at something. You know, they they love to do something. So, like yeah, that's that's it. Like anything you're passionate about, like I'll I'll mess with you. But, like, there are a lot of people that just, like, waste their time. And I used to be that person. So, like, I totally understand. But it's, like, that's why they have, like, TV and, like, a lot of music. Because people just, like, end up spending eight hours on the internet or eight hours on, like, watching TV or listening to music that they're distracted. And they don't get anything personally done for, like, their own, you know whatever they want to do like for themselves or for their creativity well, i'd still do that shit now like, like, like I, I always like I've, I've mentioned this fucking lots of times but i like i like trying to be organized with my time and shit mm-hmm. but it, it's like i i empathize deeply with people who just kind of almost have a like like a personality disorder because mm-hmm. I myself have been in situations where I know all the shit that I'm doing wrong. I know all the shit I'm doing wrong. I know that, like, watching fucking TV and everything for fucking eight hours is wasting my fucking time and shit. And it, it's weird because it's like, you know the shit could be better and you know it's in your power, but you still don't take action. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I try, I try and figure out what it is that made me start taking action because it, it, it honestly it wasn't just kind of like experiences with psychedelics and meditating and things like that there's was, was something else yeah. i think it, maybe it was just an overwhelming awareness of the lack of meaning that i desperately need to fucking fill that made me go shit i need to do something but i like like <laughs> I feel like I'm fucking repeating myself now because again it comes back to the same fucking thing I'm just like how do you inspire passion in individuals but yeah. fuck it man it's, it's you like you what... do what we're doing now you fucking talk about shit don't you so we're going to get on to a slightly different topic Boy. now because since I've spoke to you last I have a fucking an amazing device mm-hmm. for lovers of cannabis mm-hmm. of all ages <laughs> right well because because right obviously like i know i think we maybe started recording after i'm finished it but i had a joint today and that had tobacco in it i'm still being a naughty bastard mm-hmm. but i've discovered this new thing and what it's called that? a bud bomb a bud bomb what? right it's amazing it's just a little pipe i don't know can does that resolve yeah yeah i see Let's it's see. like a yeah it's a pipe where do you put the weed Wow, this is the thing, right? Okay, check it out, right? Yeah, yeah. This screws off here. And you pack the weed in this. That's, okay, so yeah. is it like the green stuff or is it like the oil? Oh, no, no, it'll take like green kind of like plant matter, mm-hmm. weed, and it'll do like hash, okay. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Right, but the, the thing that is genius about this because I was on fucking bongs for ages, and I love bongs, but they're cumbersome. You can't just, like, pop out to the shops or something and take a bong with you. <laughs> but this slips right in your pocket, right? And, right, you think, short little pipe, that's going to be a bit harsh, that is. But no, no, right? 
this has this this is a feat of engineering seriously right are you ready for the fucking marvel what is that what the heck is that this spiral fucking filter right this is a heat sink a spiral heat sink so it collects all the kind of shit that you don't want going in your lungs Oh. And it basically increases the length of the pipe, so it's like fucking, you know what I mean, like a fucking foot long or some shit. So the smoke's cool by the time it gets to you. And this was like fucking 18 quid. And well, it's not a thing in America, because you boys always smoke pure weed because you're more hardcore than us. But I think over here, because weed's illegal, when everyone starts smoking weed, they tend to smoke hash, and mm -hmm. you need something to burn the hash with, so we all smoke the tobacco. Yeah. So it, it's like a big deal trying to get off tobacco and just smoke pure weed, but if anyone's having the same trouble, mm. fucking genius, I've fallen in love with it. So you smoke hash? <laughs> Sorry, what? So you smoke hash, or, or do you smoke weed? Well, I, I smoke weed, mm -hmm. but when I first started smoking, I smoked hash, because mm. it's like... Used to be able to get like a, a fucking eighth for five quid, mm -hmm. and it'd last you a week. You know what I mean? Yeah. And well, I don't know. It's it's it's, it's probably bad, really, because like like over here again, you don't really know what you're smoking when you're smoking hash, because you get people like melting plastic bags into it to weigh it on and shit. So it's not. That's why we need it regulating. Mm -hmm. We need legal weed over. I'm so jealous of you guys. I want to come and live in America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got some good weed. <laughs> we do. I'm very spoiled. That's why I, but I, I love weed. Like, it's, it's such a chill, like, high, you know? Like, that's why. Well, I, what's your, I, I have intrigue. What's your kind of like day to day relationship with weed like? Do you, okay. do you smoke it on a daily basis? I do. So. However, when I'm producing, like when I'm doing videos and I'm editing, like I don't even like smoke until after I do all that stuff. And then because I'm just really busy. And like sometimes, like yesterday, I spent like six, seven hours like all together, like on a video. Like, so it takes up a lot. It takes up so much time. I'm dreaming about editing. I'm actually dreaming about editing. Yeah. So right in in that instance, then do you use kind of like a, a joint as a reward? It's like after you've done all your shit, you can have a nice smoke. Yeah. It's like <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I do. See, that's a very healthy way to approach it. Yeah. If no, I if I like that's the thing like. I could easily fall in that pattern of just like, because that's what I used to do, smoke all day, wonder why I didn't put up a video, and then do that every month, you know, <laughs> like so, but I, I got out of that as well, and it, it takes, what I think it takes is an awareness of it. Once you're aware of it, you're like, oh, I, I'm an asshole, I have so much time, and like, I could do so much shit, like, I'm wasting my fucking time, what the hell am I doing? See, yeah. well, I've kind of had a revelation with all that shit recently because I'm, I'm like, I think I've mentioned in prior videos that I'm one of these people who has this weird relationship with weed where I smoke it all the fucking time and then I blame some of my problems on it and then I, I <laughs> kind of like flick around all the fucking time. But I've, I've hit a nice thing at the moment where I'm just like, oh, fuck it. I've, I'm, just, I'm a high functioning weed smoker. I'm cool. I can do my shit. The only thing that gets in the way of me doing my shit is when I start overthinking it and panicking about my relationship to weed. You know what I mean? Like, I think, well, right. This, this is, you know, well, I mentioned to you in the message, didn't I, about kind of synchronicities and things. And mm -hmm. this kind of follows on from what we were talking about in uh, our last conversation mm -hmm. with, I've been on a bit of a kind of spiritual uphill climb again, you know what I mean? Coming back to it all in a nice way because I've been a bit like back on meditating and kind of like fucking, oh God, why do I feel like a dick when I admit this, but praying every day? Because, you know what I mean? Just genuinely being grateful and then it fucking magnifies, you know what I mean? And I, I think like, it's a, reorientating my kind of approach to weed so it's not like oh my god this is something that i need to stop or anything like that instead it's something that i'm grateful to kind of have in my life and 
it, that modulates my attitude towards it in a way that, like, like I don't even have to think about, oh, I, I need a biff or anything like that, and it doesn't get in the way of me doing things because I, it's not at the forefront of my mind in the way that it was when I was concerned about it. Do you know what I mean? And in, in similar things, man, I don't know whether it's purely because of the meditation or a combination of that and the putting myself in a more grateful mind space, but every interaction that I'm having at the moment just seems to be feeding back like tenfold. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, fuck, actually, there's a few things going on here. Right. I've been out a few times, I think. I think since I've seen you last. And I've been, right, I've mentioned about the psychedelic meetup thing, haven't mm-hmm. I? Yeah, so what did you know if that, there? I don't know if that made it onto the cut, but no, anyway, it's long it's story it's short. It's, it's, did it? Right, right, okay. Yeah. I, I was going on to, uh, like, going to Manchester to the psychedelic meetup thing. And anyway, I went, and it was fucking, it was good fun. <laughs> I met some very interesting people, made some connections, uh, had some fantastic discussions with folk, met some fucking weirdos as well. Uh, <laughs> if he watches this, he'll feel like a dick, but if you are watching this, you're safe and you're a nice guy, so don't fucking worry about it. But I'm telling this story anyway, because it's funny, right? <laughs> but, all right. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's how I feel when I talk oh. shit about people that watch my shit. I'm just yeah, like, oops, yeah. sorry. He's, he's a cool enough guy. So He'll get it. He'll understand the humor in it. And if I've misconstrued the situation, I'm sorry. But anyway, <laughs> I went back to this dude's house after the meetup because he's like, oh, do you want to smoke? We'll just fucking have a chill and carry on like chat shit about psychedelics. And I'm like, yes, man, that's my shit. So... Anyway, I went back to his house, just like chilling, having fucking brews and talking and shit, you know what I mean? Fucking great time, great time. And uh, But shit starts getting a bit weird every now and again, you know what I mean? You know, people are a bit like, a bit not, not informal and not kind of like, I don't know, you know, like, like maybe social boundaries feel like they're being infringed a tiny bit and maybe like but i'm the kind of guy who don't pick up on that shit because i'm totally fucking oblivious to the world so i don't realize well i don't realize shit's getting weird until it gets proper weird (laughs) but anyway right it fucking uh got to this one point and we've been having great conversation about you know the, the deepest aspects of the universe and all this shit. And then it, it brought up the fact that uh, he, he, he kind of like, he enjoyed using dildos on himself, which I'm all for. I'm all for. I'll come out, right, okay? I've, I've, I've had things up my ass and really good fun. I'm not, I'm not giving him shit for that, right, okay? <laughs> But, but that's it. I just want to but underscore this. But that's a weird this. conversation to have, yeah. Yes, it's funny to get on to, but at the time I was accepting of it. I was just like, <laughs> oh, yeah, man, I totally get you. I get where you're coming from. That's fine. You know what I mean? Everyone has a little porky bum wank from time to time. <laughs> we all get the picture. And so the evening carried on and I thought nothing more of it, right? And then, <laughs> like, shit starts getting a bit heavier and a bit heavier. Right, and I'm like, right, okay, why? I still hadn't properly, properly clocked on at this point. (laughs) But I'm like, oh man, it's getting late. I would fucking, I best set off home, you know. Just because I like my own bed. Nothing more than that, completely fucking innocent. And then he starts getting quite like, well, what is is there? Is, is there nothing I could, what, what, what can I do to make you want to stay over and and all this? And then then it all fell into place and I'm like motherfucker you are trying to fuck me you're trying to fuck me you are and I just, but I didn't say that to him that just kind of like went, and I was just like oh oh I get where you're coming from now and I'm like oh I'm sorry man I just like my own bed and shit but you know what I mean I'll see you at the next meet up and that and take care of homes but it was really weird because like right I'll, I'll level with you I've had homosexual experiences and shit like that. It's like nothing that fucking gets to me, right? Yeah. Like the thing, like I said before, the thing that got to me was 
I felt like I'd been invited under duress. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's like, I thought you were just inviting me around to be served. Now you know what I'm girls feel like. Girl. Girls always feel yeah. that way. <laughs> like, because... I don't, <laughs> man, I, I think, I, I, you know what I mean, I do the hand thing, I think I'm good at kind of coming across as gay, because I've been hit on quite a few times, but in all honesty, I'm one of these uppity cunts who kind of, whenever someone asks me about my sexuality, I'm always like, oh, I, I reserve the right to be sexually attracted to whatever consents to my attraction, you know, you know what I mean, because I'm a pleb and I think the language is unnecessary, but like, I don't know, like, this is something that I, even, like, with women, and don't get me wrong, because I'm a bloke, and I've been young, and full of fucking testosterone, and mm -hmm. not understood that women have fucking minds, and are people, and I've been misogynistic and a prick before now, you know what I mean? It's something that you have to learn about, but, like, now I'm more mature. I always try and approach every person I speak to to try and figure out like just really to try and understand their perspective you know what I mean before going for the oh I want to shag you but it, it's I don't know I think right for guys who don't have that experience mm -hmm. I'm at like the experience of being hit on because I charm the fellas <laughs> and, like I can imagine it being really difficult to understand just how how kind of like vulnerable something like that can make you feel, especially as a woman. You know what I mean? Because I love or as this a man, guy. a woman or a man. Like that's the thing. Like anybody who could feel vulnerable and feel like they're taken advantage of or feel harassed or or any of that. Like anyone. It's not just women. And like it's cool to see males talk about that too because it goes both ways. So it's, it's weird because to me though, man. Mm -hmm. This, this, I think, is the difference between... Because I, 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 I'm incapable of taking that seriously. Yeah. Right, to me, that's a fucking joke. Yeah. It's a joke, you, right. know, you, you know what I mean? Because, like, I don't, I don't feel harassed. Mm. I kind of feel really happy about the well, fact that this you know what? Like, poor I, dude decided to... Because now I've just got a stupid story in its ass. Well, no, I but, mean... Like, I, I, how, I, I, how, I've dated someone right. that, like... He actually used to call me to come over and like walk with him because he was a very good looking man and like he would be harassed all the time by gay guys all the time wherever we'd go. Like that's why he would have me around. Like it's like I don't feel safe. He lived on the Upper West Side. It's like I don't feel safe walking around because like people just harass me left and right. Like I am not gay and, and he felt very harassed so yeah i mean that can happen i understand you're coming from like a very lighthearted perspective but when it happens like multiple times and you're like all right come on like what the fuck seriously like you start wondering you're like i like hope it doesn't get weird like i've stopped talking to a lot of people because they've made it weird and that sucks because you're like they're a cool person but like they made it weird you know and like right, right. <laughs> Because this is something right, I don't think that, especially for blokes, because right, like, I think I'm on this topic because I listened to you and Rockazoo the other day, yeah. well, yesterday, and I buzzed off that conversation. You kind of like touched on these topics a bit. <laughs> and I think like the social protocol for how young men interact with the young women now is so skewed because there's, it's like all the the kind of decorum and just kind of like, and what's the word? The the kind of like set social routine of kind of like the 70s and even through to the 80s and shit. Like there was kind of guidelines of how you go about interacting with the opposite sex in a way that doesn't infringe upon the other person's humanity. You know what I mean? Just mm -hmm. kind of this enforced societal respect. And now all the floodgates are completely open. I think there's a lot of kind of young dudes who fucking... Mm -hmm. just, like, not scared of fucking women, but it's just, like, this thing that they don't understand and they're so confused as to, like, how the fuck do you interact with this 
thing that yeah. I'm now feeling extra layer of judgment yeah. over myself with. You know, right, because, right, I think I've just... Well, here's the thing. Don't be a dick. Be a nice person. Be honest. And you won't feel judged and, and you won't be in that... I mean, I honestly feel like the fact that you're even having this conversation means that you're willing to see a different perspective and that perspective is within you as well. So if you understand that, you know, you're coming from an emotional space, which is the divine feminine within yourself, then you realize that you're already connected, you know, like everybody is connected. And if we're all part of the whole, then interacting shouldn't be that fucking hard. Yes, yes, right, because, like, I I have this thing, when, whenever I kind of meet a new person, I try and go for, like... And I was, listen, I was thinking about that, remember we had a fucking conversation about, like, just fucking interacting and not judging the situation as fucking being weird, and just, like, doing it, like, yeah, so I did that yesterday, just following your perspective, and it made things so much less fucking weird, so much less fucking weird. I'm like, oh, it's not that hard. I was just being a dick. Because, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, like it, it's it's approaching interactions with people with just kind of, like, radical fucking honesty. You know what I mean? Because I find, like, I personally, right, if I'm interacting with a girl who I have some kind of fucking attraction to, mm -hmm. and I'll fire this to you because you could be my female fucking verification... And I'll bounce things back and forth with you. And we can try and come to some kind of consensus for people who are concerned about fucking interacting with the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. As to, you know, a nice fucking same protocol of how you fucking address people. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because it, it's like, if you're attracted to a girl, mm -hmm. I think loads of people go for the fucking, oh, yeah. Yeah, you're beautiful and shower with fucking compliments and all this kind of, and that gets fucking weird quick, even though like folk are just trying to be nice. Mm -hmm. And I think like, I I personally like have the approach of like, you, right, you interest me. You know what I mean? That tends to be the word that I go for. It's mm -hmm. like, I find you interesting. Why do you do or have an interest in X? You know what I mean? As an initial fucking just interaction with someone, because it, it's like it's if if you were interacting with like someone who you weren't attracted to, mm -hmm. how do you speak to people? You just go up to them and you're like, "Hey, all right, man. Oh, is that some shit you're into? Oh, that's cool shit. Explain the shit that you're into to me." And then instantaneously you start learning more and more about each other because it's like people do this weird thing, especially like guys I find who haven't had a lot of relationship experience and shit, where they just see a woman that they're attracted to, project this weird kind of like idealized vision onto them, right? Mm -hmm. And then go, all my eggs in one basket, I'm immediately in love with this person and I'm gonna start interacting with them like, like they're my fucking soulmate. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like, that's a really bad place to enter into an interaction with someone with. Because you have to remain objective and be like, you don't know this person, and that's suffocating as shit. And you have to like approach them with the respect for not just them, but of yourself, of yeah. trying to figure out if they're the kind of person that you would enjoy the company of. Yes. You know what I mean? Uh, that's it's, very, it's, it's... very important. And, you know, I feel a lot of people are guilty of that, but you do it enough. And then you realize your own self-worth and and what type of person you want to be around. I had to date a lot of shitty people until I met, you know, the person that is awesome, you know, and like on my vibe. So, yeah, it was, it's, you, you have to deal with a lot of stuff and you have to realize what works for you and what doesn't. I don't want a guy that treats me like shit. I don't want somebody that is an asshole and like bosses me around <laughs> like I just don't like that that's not the type of dude I want so like I know what I want now and it was like I had to number one date a little bit that's the first thing you have to do is find out what type of person whether you're a man or a woman you want to be with like what turns you on what type of person what type of personality turns you on and if that person has similar goals you know if they're just as motivated like what 
like everything has to there needs to be some type of compatibility and the next thing is like genuine love like do you really love that person well that takes time and that takes a lot of shit to you know like dealing with sorry i just had to jump because you, yeah. you said it takes love and that to me is the most important thing yeah. in, in my eyes right, okay if you're kind of like if you have some kind of fucking erotic interest in someone right the best thing you can do is approach that interaction with love which means if you truly love that individual unconditionally mm -hmm. right because that's how we're trying to approach fucking everyone in this life then that means you have their best fucking interests at heart so you need to accurately figure out if a relationship with you is the best thing for them because you might yeah. fuck them up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But the, the thing is, like, that's why I took a few, a little time to be by myself. Like, I did that. Like, I spent a lot of alone time, like, fixing, doing a lot of psychedelics, all that shit. Because, like, that, that's exactly it. Like, I said that in one of my videos. Like, would you date you? I don't know. Like, some that's people, I don't know. But, like, I, I found, like... There was a point where I'm like, yeah, I'm a really cool fucking person. So, like, when you get to that point, then you meet somebody that's just like you. That's just, a, you know, like, I mean, so, like, there is, I find with finding a partner, there is self-discovery. It's the kundalini energy. You're finding what, you know, essentially what energy will catapult you into higher states of consciousness. So, you know, yeah, like, it's really important. A lot of people don't put that much importance to, you know, finding a person that has values that, you know, like, that is, like, coming from, like, a, a mindful place. And, like, when you are a mindful person, when you are a conscious person, you automatically don't want to be a dick to another person. So, like, you're good. Like, if you, you know, and that's, for me, that's the type of partner that I wanted. Because it was myself. So, like, I had to step away from a relationship where a person didn't want to change. They didn't want to do any self-work. And it was really difficult. So, like, again, like, sometimes you have to learn those lessons as well for self-worth. And, like, w will you put up with this for the rest of your life? And the answer was no. <laughs> you know, like, honestly, I couldn't because, like, it wouldn't be fair to me. You know, because I knew that I could find somebody that would make this experience, like, so much better. Well, because they had my, my open mind, you know? Right, can, can I ask something for you, right? Because obviously you'll, you'll have learned a lot from the kind of relationships that you've had in the past and kind of where they went wrong, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. For people who might be in a relationship that they're unsure of or yeah. unsatisfied of or whatever, what what... Are the things that for you are signifiers that the person you're with isn't compatible for you? Um, well, first, the thing, the reason why I always look, does the person have the same values as me? Do they have the same interests? Like, I am a psychedelic person. I can only be with a psychedelic person. That's it. You know, um, I, I'm really into meditation. I'm really into consciousness. So, like, I think a, a lot of people, like, on the surface, they like it, but they it's just an afterthought. But, like, it's 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 life, man. And, like, I feel c certain individuals like us, we feel that. That's why we do this type of work. And, like, we, we try to, like, encourage people to also find their power and start doing what they love because it's, it's – if you can't even be in that space if you don't heal yourself enough. And, like, that's what psychedelics do. And, like, that's why he was so afraid of doing the psychedelics because he was like, I can't. I just – I can't. He, there was so much that was, like, in his heart that he had. And, like, I knew. I knew there was a lot of shit he had to work through. And I find the older you are, the harder it is to work through it. See, that, that, that's quite interesting to me. So does, does that mean, then, that – someone kind of having psychedelic experience is a prerequisite to you feeling kind of like comfortable in that in like a romantic relationship like could you could you obviously you're in a stable relationship mm -hmm. now and everything but yeah. i mean could you see yourself in a relationship hypothetically with an individual who had never taken psychedelics 
Um, it's not even. It's not even. It's not even the psychedelic. Sorry. It's a psychedelic state of mind. So, again, I I don't really know. I'm just. I, I, I like somebody with an expanded mind, you know, somebody that's sensitive, somebody that is aware, compassionate, empathetic, because that's me, you know? So, like, we're like that. So once you are like that, you want somebody like that because it's easier and you could share experiences and, like, you could be psychic together and, like, you could, like, you know, like, fucking you know, say something and they're like, oh, like, that's what I was just thinking. And like, you know, have dreams together. Like fucking, I dream about my partner all the time. or like having conversations and shit like that. So like, it gets cool. Like, I mean, I never had that before with anybody. Like, so, but then again, I never picked anybody on purely consciousness. It was usually picking somebody because of how they looked, which is what we do. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I still think that kind of has to factor in to a degree. Of course, to a degree. I mean, that, that's like, that is the first thing that you look at. But after, there are people that are good looking and conscious. So like, of course, you know, like, but it doesn't, it's, it, it can't just from be from a superficial level only because my last relationship was purely superficial, purely superficial. That's all it was. So, yeah. all right. So, so, right, okay, yeah. I'm going to have to ask some probing questions. Uh, probing question time. Yeah. You, like, the initial stages of kind of like waking up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had the kind of like self doubt and shit mm -hmm. like that. And it's like, I, as, as I'm a fucking example of myself, that's not just limited to the initial fucking stages. I think yeah. you can fall back into that at any point. You know yes. what I mean? Yes. But anyway, anyway, the, the hard, the hard questions. Mm. Which aren't really hard. I'm just being a nosy fuck, to be mm -hmm. honest. Mm -hmm. But it might might get a bit too personal for you wanted to completely divulge on the internet. Mm -hmm. But you you were once upon a time the the New York socialite. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck's that like, man? I How mean, honestly, it was very function? fucking superficial, and everybody wanted to be your friend because of who you are, what who you dated, where you live, how you look, and it was like. After a while, I was bored. I was fucking bored. And that's when I started doing DMT and I woke up from everything. I'm like, oh shit, no, so, this right. is. Who? Oh, I'm getting delayed. I can what? hear myself back through your speaker. Don't oh, worry, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I, I'm getting distracted. That's fucking annoying, though. Can we stop that? How do we stop that? Oh, it stopped. Cool. Okay. Sorry. All I right. just got really confused for a minute. Okay. Um, anyway, right. Okay. Who was Samina before psychedelics? Like, like I was, how, I how was have you changed? I was you know really I mean? um, conceited and like just egoic and a bitch and not very nice. Examples? I was, Give me examples of some nasty shit you've done. Uh, I, I would, I mean, I, I, still, I still am capable of this, but I'm more conscious of it. Like, when I'm talking to a partner, like, I'll just start screaming and just like, ah! But now I, like, kind of, even my, right now, he's laughing at me. He's laughing right now because he's not going to say anything because I even did that yesterday. Whatever. But I apologize. <laughs> Okay, so you now... Two need, you two need to do one of these videos. <laughs> you need to. Yeah, you know, like, I, I apologize, you know, and, like, I'm more aware of it as it's even happening, and I'm like, I'm being a dick, I know, but I need to be a dick right now. And that's it. Like, it's a different way of communicating, because before, I would just fucking leave. I'd be like, fuck this, I don't want to be here. And in the middle of dinner, I would walk out. I've done that recently, right. actually. <laughs> oh, I forgot. But I get very mad. Like, I, I, I had this very bad temper, and I talk about this in my video that I just put up, that with the whole dream yoga that I've been doing, like, I've been working on those... Sorry, dream yoga? Yeah. Can you explain this to me? I'm not heard of this. All right. It's Sorry, when so you start um, accessing consciousness through through dreams and it's an actual yoga and this is what they teach um in buddhism and, and hinduism so you can actually access higher states of consciousness and change yourself do alchemy within your dreams 
And so the past two weeks, I believe, this happened like a year ago as well, where I was like having these dreams where I was conscious and I was like changing my thought process or working on issues that I had problems with or working on like self-doubt, um, appreciation, gratitude, love, anger, depression. So you like, you go through all of these things and you heal them in your dreams. So like, I haven't had them for a, a year basically. And like in the past two weeks, I've been having them every day. So it's been changing me. Like I'm like fucking not that angry anymore compared to like how fucking angry I was when I first started. So yeah, um, it changes you and like you stop doing certain things. You start, you know, you stop being so judgmental to yourself because you're like, fuck it. You know, like it's, 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 it's all good, man. I forgot what I was even saying. Oh, you're okay. You're okay. <laughs> I, th I think that was like, uh, uh. A, a wonderful sidestep of a probing question. Mm. Wait, what were you talking about again? <laughs> uh, right, right, basically. Oh, the I things, just, the, the, the shitty well, things that I I'll, do. I'll, yeah, yeah, I yeah. usually it, just it, scream at people and just like no, no, slam I mean, like, is the like, like a specific occurrence you can remember about like when you were a dick to someone, something that you regret that kind of sticks in your mind. Do you have any of that shit? If you don't, it's cool. Yeah, it's I cool. mean, no, not really. Not any regret. That's the good thing. That I'm happy I don't have any regret on anything. I think everything that I've done has helped a person, whether I know it or not, everything is synchronistic, and I don't feel bad about anything. I really don't. You know, I do feel that as bad as, like, I can be, I can uh, I also... I wish I could say the same thing. I can, but, <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like I, I do genuinely come from a place of, like, wanting to help. So then you check yourself when you're being an asshole and it, it becomes easier. So, like, no, I, I used to do that a few years ago when I first started. But, again, just, like meditation just like you know any type of practice any you know producing that you're doing it's a practice it's the same thing with consciousness you, you know become more aware of your dickness you know and you're like oh i need to change that or you know i could work on that or i could be more mindful of that and it does become easier so like do i regret anything now absolutely not before I don't, I, I just think I have that person, that I don't give a fuck personality, you know, which is in my benefit. So if you kind of have that perspective, of like everything is perfection, whether you're a dick or not, whether you know it or not, you can always have regret, but like, I don't like to live that way. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. I don't know, right. Because I mean, that man, this is something I consider it completely minor thing you know what i mean but i've done like proper stupid shit me like like at school i put this kid in a bin because he got oh that, that's the thing i've never been a bully twat. i've never been a bully i was i was mostly I like um a bookworm and i've like always kept to myself so like again i can't really say like there was one time and i talk about this in one video where and this is the one time that i talk about like some type of regret because it affected me after a group of friends that i was I grew up with they I've known them since I was like in third fourth grade and they were really mean to a girl when I came back and we were in our 20s actually and they would always invite her to things just to like make fun of her only because she was beautiful she was absolutely fucking beautiful and they felt very insecure and they would always like pick on her and I didn't say anything and you know what she stopped talking to them she never you know came around again and guess what then they started doing that shit to me. And then I had to be like, what the fuck? And like, I thought about that. I'm like, I was just like getting what I was silent about. And that's an issue. So that's the one thing in my life that I could say that, yeah, you know, but it affected me. If it didn't affect me, I probably wouldn't have thought about that. I wouldn't, have, you know, like, and, and like, that's what I mean. Like, even bad situations like that can help catapult you to higher states of consciousness if you know how to do it and if you're aware and if you're thinking about it. Uh, very true, very true. Yeah. I, just, I just need to leap on some self-defense there though because I don't want to be misconstrued. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I, I didn't put this kid in a bin out of bullying. I put this kid in a bin because he was uh, he was being rather abusive and fucking obnoxious, and I lost my shit. You know, you know what I mean. But like, I think that's something that I've had to grapple with, right? Um, right. I've got a fucking. I've got a long fuse, me. I've got a long fuse. It takes a lot to piss me off, but. When I kind of snap, I just totally lose my shit. A bit like you were saying before, you know what I mean? But, like, I don't know. I imagine for some reason that you lose your shit to a slightly lesser level than I do. When I lose my shit, I proper kind of lose my shit. You know what I mean? I don't know. I I was pretty bad. Yeah. I mean, I would just, like, scream. Still do sometimes. And then I catch myself. but man, this fucking is just one of many illustrations of my ability to get fucking angry, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, my old flat that mm-hmm. I had, um, every fucking door in that flat, right, I punched a fucking hole through at one point. All the doors were, like, fucking re-fucking-filled in and shit because I punched all these holes in. And this one time, right, th- this were kind of one of those things where you kind of, like, a, a moment of realisation, right? Because obviously I play bass and I'm very precious about my hands because I'm like... Then why are you knocking me. doors? <laughs> this is the fucking thing. But doors, holes, holes. Get punched through them. And you don't break your fucking hands, right? But, like, I, I, I kind of had this... Oh God, I, I were arguing with my fucking ex-missus who I were living with at the time. And, uh, I, like, uh, basically we had this, uh, like, fridge freezer you know like a fucking refrigerator and we kept all the cereal boxes on the top of the fridge right and there were a box of sugar puffs just a big box of sugar puffs with a stupid fucking sugar puff monster face on it and anyway right we were arguing and i fucking lost my shit and that was the closest thing to me so i just smacked this fucking stupid honey monster face as hard as i physically could not even thinking that it was just like resting against the fucking breeze block wall and so i smacked this fucking breeze block wall as hard as i physically could broke me fucking knuckle couldn't play for fucking weeks and i'm just like man you're a dick you need to like sort this shit out you know what i mean and like it's so I feel I feel right. I like to think mm-hmm. that I've got that component of me under control. <laughs> yeah. But honestly, I'm not hundred percent sure because no one's got me to that level of anger in a good way. You know what? You like know what I, mean? I, I also talked I forgot to mention that in a video. Like when you are inducing breakthroughs, everything that they could possibly say, you know, when you're confronting somebody's programming. They will throw everything nasty at you because that's what they're trying. They're trying. It's a defense mechanism. They're trying to defend their belief systems. And when you face that enough, it just flies right over you because you realize that that's just a stage of like deprogramming and you're like, whatever. All right. Keep on like being disgusting. Just let it out. All right. Are we done? Like, and then move on. And that's it. And like, again, like if you deal with that and I wonder, I'm like, why am I dealing with some difficult shit? Well, because, like, that's consciousness. And you're going to have to deal with diff- difficult shit. Like, and we were talking, Rakazula and I were saying nothing is beneath us. Like, this is a humanity shit. We have to fix ourselves to fix things. And that's how we're going to open communication with each other, understand one another, stop being dicks to one another, become more compassionate to each other. And, yeah, so, like, once you realize they're just different levels and then you start realizing, okay... You feel somebody in that state and like being an empath, it's good for me. I can feel their suffering so I'm less of a dick. So that works in my favor because before I just didn't think, I just reacted. You know, and once you get past that reaction, you know, you're coming from a higher awareness. So like nothing really phases you that much. Uh, can, can I throw a kind of slightly different perspective on yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, because, yeah. like, my experience of that's very fucking similar to yours, but mm-hmm. I have a uh, kind of like an extra layer to it because even right, and I think it's part of, like you say, when when you're kind of an empathic individual, mm-hmm. right? It's a double-edged sword yes. because you can fall into that state of thinking and respect that other individual's, you know, emotional state, mm-hmm. or you can use the, the 
the the information that you can glean as an empath mm -hmm. to find their weakest point and target it and be an utterly callous venomous prick you know what i mean i mean I, th I think that's it but again like with i i feel that this is all a process and like you begin to not do that because you realize when you do things like that you are not creating change you're not creating strength you're not creating unity and you're not creating beauty so like why like that's not what i'm doing here like, it's just a state of mind. You begin to change. Like, you really do. And, like, that's what I say. Put up fucking videos talking about this shit, and then the next fucking day, you will become it. Like, it's just a thought. And, you know, it's so funny because people are like, oh, I love your ideas. I love your thoughts. Like, it's, it's so... But they don't realize that our whole entire matrix is created out of ideas and thought. You know? Like, that. that's what this is. And if we can introduce different ideas that are more productive and more about healing then we could probably fucking get somewhere like yeah that that's what's going on here and that's what i realized i'm like oh wow everybody's just really fucking suffering and it's like a battlefield that's exactly what 3d is and everybody's just really fucking suffering and i realized like even the shit that's on youtube there's a lot of bullshit that could spiral people into a state of further psychosis and I just don't want to feed into that because again it's not productive and there are two states of mind that you could have when doing this one of fear and one of love so you have to pick what will be your you know perspective at that point in time and what you want to spread so yeah it's really fucking important to always have that perspective and you and that's what I said with every single action I said this in my last video every single action you are uh, basically a projection of the higher self or lower self that's where you're acting from in every single moment in time so you choose in every single moment in time to be unconscious or conscious to you know act just like through you know instinct or to just observe relax and take in what you're trying to learn from this whole entire experience no definitely definitely yeah, yeah. like Oh, what's the best way for me to put this? So it's going to take me a minute to arrange mm. this. You might want to take a time stamp. Um, right. In, in terms of taking on the, the upgrades of information that you get throughout life. Mm. Like, and this kind of falls back into the things that I was talking about, about kind of like prayer and shit earlier on. Um, the, one of the things that I've found helps me most, the anger thing and addressing the components of my personality that are known negatively impact me in the world mm -hmm. is that means kind of like an asking for assistance through prayer to my higher self or god or whatever the fuck you want to call it and, and because it's like a, a verbal outpouring to the ineffable that's fucking genuine for some reason makes this change in my mind that just internally setting the intention doesn't I don't know what it is, and I can't explain it because, like, the fact that it works mm -hmm. is just well, <laughs> man. Fucking, ah, oh, I'm just gonna say it right. It, well, well, God, I always get like this, but it's like, oh, fucking God exists, don't it? You know what I mean? It's, it's like, and right, that's the real. thing if you start you realizing fixed, that everybody, fucking... everybody is a reflection of source energy, you start seeing life in a different fucking way and you start treating people different and you start seeing people different and you start seeing yourself differently and that's where we're going like that's what i mean like it's it's going past that inferiority complex or that superiority complex and realizing that there is divine code or divine source within everything and that's when you stop seeing who's here who's there it doesn't matter doesn't matter yeah. you know and like that's, that's that why it, it, it kind of really hurts me when like I find people that like still think that way because I'm like 
that's a trap and that will stop you from going even further because there's a lot more that you could download, there's a lot more that you could experience and there's a lot more that you could change but you just have to really believe in yourself and that's the only way that I'm doing this stuff and like it's the only reason why it's growing because I believe in it and if you believe in it then other people will believe in it if you believe in yourself other people will believe in you you know well that, that's kind of like what I think is so important about well right okay true metaphysics and assumptions aside there's something so psychologically beneficial about accepting a transcendental other into your worldview mm -hmm. you, you know what i mean because it's it's the allowance of the belief that there's something above you that you can move into you know what i mean if you can't allow yourself to see a kind of divine perfection then you're never going to progress towards that as, as, exactly. a, as an individual. Exactly. And that's what I said. I, find, I, I said that in another video cast. I said, I'm realizing that everybody that I'm interviewing is striving for perfection in their own way. And that's exactly what it is. So once you recognize that within people, no matter how flawed they are, then you go higher. And you feel your God presence every day. Like, that's how I start my videos. Like, that's how you have to start. That's how you have to communicate. It's how you have to be. Like, it, you become consciousness. You become, you know, illumination for others and for yourself. And it's just this fractal effect. So, yeah, that's what's going on here. And that's why, like, one person can't do it. It's, it's a collective thing you know so as long as you have your perspective right you're good yeah and you yeah. can always check yourself like that's what I'm realizing you know you can master your consciousness you can master things so if you start mastering things it becomes easier for you this is what I've been doing for the past you know a few years and finally it's getting easier so that's why I've been putting my attention to other things so I can master those things and you start doing other things and like that's how you become a productive person. Yeah, yeah. Because I used to be very different I, and I wanted to talk about this. Before, I'd wake up, smoke weed, nonstop, watch TV, hang out, always wonder why I can't some, get something done, never do anything, never read, never, and it was just this constant cycle of watching other people's YouTube videos, watching TV, you know, like, watching movies, and, like, just never producing anything, and one day just stop. I turned everything off. I unplugged, and that's it, and that's how I got shit done, and that's how I still get stuff done, because I have to set aside some time to do that stuff that I want to do so now I set like a good six hours to doing my videos and then one to two hours of studying and then another time to do this and then I have to work on this and then I have to work on music and I have to like so again like you have to use your time wisely and and start you know like realizing there's so much to do so yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. and then you, you start really becoming serious about things. You start taking yourself seriously. Other people start taking you seriously. And then, boom, you're doing what you love. You know, and that doesn't have to just be YouTube. It could be music. That could be cooking. That could be, I don't know, healing. That could be anything you want it to do, you know. Um, but everybody has the potential to find what they love and to do what they love and to make that their abundance. It's just that they're stuck in this false programming that says no, or this false narrative that says no, you're going to do this, this, and this. And because they don't find their own godhood, their own divinity, their own self-worth, whatever you want to call it, they judge the people that are in that space, you know, and that's okay because like, I hope to show them, you know, in the future that they are worth it, 
Like, that's why I keep on doing this. Like, you have to. I just have well, to. Well, right. Yeah. Can, can I kind of, like, give you an example of how focusing on the, the passion mm -hmm. fixes the other things as yeah. well? You know what I mean? Because this is part of the kind of synchronicity that I was kind of mentioning to you about. Where, like... Um, well, if I were, we didn't get it recorded, we, we did we, but last time me and you were talking, you did a kind of like an off-camera tarot reading for oh, yeah. me. And uh, anyway, kind of like following on from some shit like that, um, I would kind of like head down into like production on my album and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've had this thing for a while where like the reason why I went to that psychedelic meetup and things like that is I'm trying to kind of find more people who... Uh, you know, on that wavelength. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, in the process of doing album and stuff, I needed to procure artwork. So I just ended up thinking like, fuck, I've not, I need to get, give some energy to someone else. You know what I mean? So I found this artist that I appreciated the work of and I'm like, yo, let me commission you to do an album cover. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But anyway, this artist ends up being part of this studio complex, like in this uh, like fucking area of Manchester, not too far from where I live. And I've like went down to fucking pick up this artwork and like met all these people in this fucking studio complex. And it's like fucking heaven, man, this place, like big old fucking industrial unit, all kitted out with like a music studio and an art studio and shit. And the coolest motherfuckers ever. I think I spent like fucking 10 hours there or something, get as baked as fuck with everyone and loving it. And it was just like, oh my God, I found heaven. This place is fucking brilliant. And it's like, I didn't find that place by going out to try and find that place. I found that place fucking accidentally because I was like, head down, right, got to get this album finished. Oh, I know what, I'll give a bit of positive energy to another entity trying mm -hmm. to do their fucking art mm -hmm. and look what fucking happens, you know what I, I mean? I always like, find oh. that when I'm, when I'm sharing that energy with someone, that's when something happens for me. Like, I've been really just, like, focusing on, like, just spreading that energy to everyone possible. And, like, of course, I've been growing as well. Like, that's why I'm so in my power. Like, everybody's going to get there. Everybody's going to get there. It just takes patience. And and um, a lot of, you know, just, like, it's you got to suffer a little to realize that that's not you. What you're identifying isn't you. What you're identifying with isn't you. You know, because, like, I was also doing that. Like, I wasn't doing anything that I loved before. You know, and, and it showed because I wasn't very passionate about it, you know. So, like, I find that with the internet, with the computers, with everything, like, people are becoming creators. And it's becoming easier to do what you love and to monetize off of what you love. And if everybody does that, you know, without any judgment right now for what's good, what's bad, and just... Like, I was watching this um, YouTube video. It was like, okay, so... It's this like village in India and they prepare a whole bunch of food and they have like a million subscribers, right? And it's this like family in India and this old guy, he like his grandpa, he prepares all this food like every day for homeless people. And there are so many people that are so thankful. They're like, oh, this, what you're doing is great. They monetize their videos, but all the, you know, the money they give to like poor people in India and then they, they show a camera. It's shot beautifully, number one. These excellent quality, you know, like even the camera editing, everything's beautiful. It's very movie quality. And then they, they like show them like delivering food to homeless people. And it's so fucking beautiful. And you could use your platform for shit like that. And it's awesome. You know, like I will never say like, that's horrible. Like, you know, but you realize they have like maybe 300,000 likes, 20,000 likes, but they still have like 5,000 or 7,000 dislikes. Why? Because people are like, they're making so much money. But look at how much they can give back to their community. Look at how much they could do. Look at how much change they could create. And you're judging them for making YouTube money? Like, that's crazy. And there are people fighting over. These motherfuckers are just fucking sat at home doing nothing and want someone to fucking whinge about them. Fuck them. Fuck them. <laughs> but that's what I mean. Like, Not in I a judgmental see... way. I get that it's like they're at that like, point. 
but uh, but I I, I I totally subscribe to that channel because I'm like that's so fucking cool like that a community in India can monetize off of something and feed homeless people every single day that's really fucking cool because a lot of them like it like you see like the state of just like poverty and like how much they can give I mean you I'll think say, about it like they're making huh I, I think it's called a village food factory that's what it's called it's so cool and they have a few channels like that where they just like sh like he's like preparing all of this food from scratch it like on a fire like old school style and it's so cool and one man does everything himself and then they go and they deliver all this food it's so cool to see that like people are doing that kind of stuff and like using platforms for that because like you said it could be used for the ego for the self or like there's another um youtube platform i saw like you should you should link to that yeah yeah definitely just um there was yeah. another youtube platform where it was like um these light workers like they give money away like they're making so much money that they give money away so like again you you can you know help people if you want you like it's we can't judge people for being gifted that's what it is you can't judge people for being gifted all right i, I need to share something that i'm coming i don't right i don't know whether this is a good thing or a bad thing but it, i'm kind of accepting that maybe it makes me feel better mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know i'll just discuss it with you anyway i was having this conversation with my friend Stu the other day Stu's was a fucking genius really smart bastard um but we were just discussing again kind of like accepting the kind of like transcendental and shit like that you know what i mean mm -hmm. and uh oh fuck i'm kind of half losing my thread oh no <laughs> no i had a really good thing oh god why does my brain do this shit to me oh yeah okay oh, wait, i was talking what? to Stu. And let me try and replay the conversation in my head. We were sat in my front room. It was, it was a cool October day. Probably had a cup of coffee because I drink a lot of coffee. We're on about the transcendental. Oh, you bastard. You bastard. Sometimes they just go, don't they, thoughts? You know what I mean? They're yeah. ethereal bastards. Slippery motherfuckers. I'm sure it'll pop back eventually, but you're gonna to have to save me, Sam. Serious. <laughs> save me. Throw me a line. Uh, Help. We were talking about like, um, yeah. Oh, we were talking about using uh, your platform or your power or your influence for good. Yeah, yeah. That's what we were doing. <laughs> oh, it's not brought it back. Fuck it. Fuck it. It's cool. It's cool. I don't mind. Right. Okay. I need to discuss something with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is just kind of like, I, really, I just kind of like want to verbalize a future intention because mm -hmm. I think it'd be ass. I think it'd be so fucking ass, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's like, there's a lot of folk now connecting mm -hmm. like through your platform. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's one of those things that will be a uh, probably a bit of a ball ache to organize and have to be off in the future sometimes to manage to kill it like manage to work the logistics of what i'm thinking but man you should do like some kind of get together man where you like all the people you've had on the fucking like conversations and shit mm -hmm. we'll do it like a day somewhere where we'll all have like fucking just a big meet up and fucking chats and a sick party and some shit you know what i mean or like just fucking like do it as an event and invite people that would be sick man i want to put on a big event we need to put on something huge yeah <laughs> man, just think about it that's all we need to do for now and the idea will penetrate everyone's minds and eventually inception we'll just <laughs> have a happening you know what I mean? Cause like, man, right? I think I have sixties envy. You know what I mean? And I'd like to be part of the movement that kind of creates the second renaissance. I know that's like quite a lofty hope and whatnot. But we need to pull something off like fucking Woodstock level. You know what I mean? Like, like, like the this generation's 
being, you know what I mean? We need... Well, I know there's loads of festivals about and shit like that, and there's something that I really ex- like respect, actually. It's like you're aware of uh, Alex Gray and Alison Gray. Yeah, you? yeah, yeah, yeah. They have, yeah. Um, uh, what is that, chapel? Of, yeah, yeah, chasm, chapel of sacred, sacred mirrors. mirrors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's some cool stuff. Have, have, you, like, have you ever been? No, I've never been there. But aren't you, like, vaguely close enough to that? Right. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, upstate New York, I believe. Yeah. Why the fuck have you not been there? Just get your shit together, chaps. Come on. Go no, there. Go there and tell me how good it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll check it out. They have some really cool stuff. I was looking into that um, before, but like, I just never went there. Because at the time I was living in the city, you could easily like take a train there or something. But it was like all the way, it's like upstate, it's like all the way up there. But yeah, that would be cool to like, I'll, I'll, I'll investigate. New York State is huge. Yeah, yeah, New York State's pretty big, so it's all the way up. Um, but I, I would definitely check that out and, and report back to you and tell you what, I wanted to go when they built, what is that, Entheon, I believe? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it it's still partially under it's, construction. Yeah, it's, they're still sure doing it. I thought that was really, really cool. It looks like a psychedelic chapel. <laughs> yeah. well, my, it looks I, like imagine, a DMT trip. <laughs> yeah. But, like, like, because that's where all the kind of old, beautiful architecture and shit came from. It was like humans trying to make these homages to God, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it's like, I so hope we we instigate a kind of like a, a cultural shift in that direction again, where we start indulging in, you know, like transcendental architecture and shit like that. Like, like imagine how fucking beautiful we could make everything. Imagine if all the cities in the world were just like pieces of fucking artwork. And I know, like, I can respect, you know, like high rise architecture and, you know, the, like the engineering of it and shit like that. But it's not like, pretty is it you know what i mean i like imagine imagine like i don't fucking obviously i'm gonna name a cliche thing because i don't know america but imagine like the empire state building or some shit if it had like fucking serpent like dragons all up the fucking side of it and like a fucking flame with a big fucking eye on the top of it and shit and like oh oh we could just live in like it's like like neo fucking hippie utopia <laughs> i mean like it's it's already i i find that it, it it's just beginning it's it's an evolution and like we're just the start i think it's a progression that will be hundreds of years and i yeah, think that yeah. like things will change if we allow it to if we take the initiative if artists decide that they want to build different things do different things like there's a lot of like artists like uh, um street art especially where i used to live was really prevalent um a lot of like the murals on the walls and um actually a, a street artist contacted me i was like hey i've been watching your videos i'm like it's so cool like i did like like you say you don't really realize like how many people you're reaching but you're doing it because like it's something that's not being done in my way. See, everybody has the ability to express their truth in a way, you know, that is them and everything will be different. You know, everyone's perspective is different. Um, and it's really cool that we could have like conversations like this and like just really understand one another, you know, um, and like have this communication where like instead of like judging one another or coming from a place of like not understanding number one realizing that we don't understand something and then elaborating on it and like sharing information to get on a level of understanding you know and like that that's what i mean like the conflict isn't necessarily a bad thing like i really don't think so because i find that, that stress creates a lot of change so it's Definitely. how we use that where we're coming from um, and, you know, like, it becomes easier, that's all. 
like at least for me it just it becomes so much easier and um <laughs> huh sorry <laughs> It's, it's right, I was going to say like a cliche thing, I was going to be like, pressure makes diamonds and friction sharpens the well, blade. Well, yeah, and, and you think about it, like it's really truth though, because like, I mean, my last year, I've had so much experience and a lot of it wasn't necessarily good to, like in normal people's perspective, but I mean, like... I have so much more understanding. I have so much an under understanding about the universe, about myself, about the matrix, about reality. So you can't buy that shit. You no, know, definitely. you can't buy that I, shit. Seriously, I, I think like <laughs> even far the, like as far as folks are doing this shit go, you'd utterly amaze me, man. Because like the rate at which you refine yourself, it, it's. It's just utterly impressive, you know what I mean? I don't mean to blow smoke up your ass, kind of thing. Thank you. But it, it's like, <laughs> I, you give me revelations, you know what I mean? And like, I li like I was saying earlier on, I like being the woke guy, you know what I mean? But it, it's like, I find you humbling, you know what I mean? Because it's like, oh, beat me to it again. Motherfucker, right, now I've got to assimilate this. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, thank you for your presence. But like that—that's what I mean cool, by though. like really like having immense gratitude and love in every single interaction and seeing the godhood within everyone and the divinity within everyone. And once you get on that level of appreciation and love, that you just want to share beauty and love and truth. And it's because you love them. Like, like, that's what my last video is. Like, I do this because I fucking love you. Like, that's what I said. And I got really, like, teary. And I'm like, it's just this love that I have, like, for people. And it's just, that's humbling to me. Like, that really puts you in your place. That really, like, has this, like, that's why my path is so, like, solid and direct. And, like, and I'm just doing so well. It's because it comes from a place of, like, love. You know, and once you come from that place, like, everything works out, you know, so, like, that's where you have to be, and, like, that's, that's when, like, every interaction becomes less cringe, and wow, more true. beautiful, man, seriously. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know, yeah, I was looking at the dog. Um, yeah, but it becomes, like, just deeper levels of understanding, you judge less, you see the humanity in people, you see the vulnerability in people. You see the suffering in people. You see the strength in people. Um, you see the pain. So, like, I mean, when you see that, and you see the beauty, when you see that, it's like everything just, like, rolls over because you know something that's far more important. Um, and you just stop reacting, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Man, I, I was, I'm, I'm going to have to run off me, I'm afraid, yeah. because it's getting a bit late. And that, yeah, yeah, but... Yeah. Before I go, I want to say a couple of things. Thank you very much yeah. for, you know, giving me the, the attention on this and whatnot. And, but th I think thank that you we... again, just on like a personal level for first off the fucking tarot reading because I find that very impactful. It's it's helped my brain out a lot, That's and it. as well just general conversation with you, man. It, it's helped me throw a few things into place recently, and it's cool as fuck much appreciated yeah you just you keep on like giving that vibe and like like giving that attention to everything you know and like it'll work out like that's how shit is like it's like the but laws I of the universe utterly appreciate the effort that you put in with me seriously yeah <laughs> yeah yeah totally i mean like it feels good man it just it genuinely feels good so like and you start realizing, like, that's how life is. That's heaven on earth. That's bliss. Like, that's kundalini. That's reality if you choose it to be. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, man, um, I was going to say, actually, just quick before you yeah. go, make sure that you and your fella do, like, one of these chats, right? I know it might be a bit weird for you, and you don't have to do it straight away, but what? people would love it. I'd love it. Do it. And anyway, look after yourselves and much love and tower again and that. And I'll speak right, to you definitely. soon, Hobbs. That's right.
reflections. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and check out my other videos.